Greetings, I'm Rob Chapman. This uh, is the Captain. And we're here to show you some beautiful new Vox Joy. Vox Woo! Joy! If you want to talk about heritage, uh, you have to talk about Vox, one of the original guitar amps that uh, all of rock and roll was invented for. Vox, coming from the Germanic Alsatian language, meaning voice. Absolutely. Or oh, something like that. Um, Did you hear so, that noise that sounded yeah. like I passed wind? It was actually it was your, it was this your, brand it's the sound new of nitrocellulose Paul. going. Well, I'll do it again. You see, look, see that's so nitrocellulose makes that noise, but polyurethane doesn't make any noise. Yeah, that's interesting. That is interesting. Do you reckon that's why they, they went from this to that over time? No, it's, it's why your guitar sounds the way it does, and this uh, one sounds different because it doesn't make it. Okay. Do a thing, is it? Tell me about the ampli. Okay, so Vox, as you guys know, uh, designed an incredible amplifier uh, 50 years ago, maybe more, uh, that uh, bands like the Beatles used. Um, and more recently, as in uh, you know, last 10 or 15 years, have absolutely been at the forefront of uh, amps designed for players on a, a more of a budget and looking to use amps at home and for small jams and little gigs and things like that, and pack all the kind of the modeling and effects and USB and everything into it. And for the last, as I said, 10 it's years or so. a bit of pan so, of A little bit of pan of chocolate there. <laughs> the last 10 years or so, the, the Vox Valve Tronics range, maybe be more than that, uh, has been you know one of the most popular amps in the world. And hurrah, 2015. Um, there is a new version of Valve Tronics with everything upgraded called the VTX series. This time, they've got down to the basic circuitry of remodels, and they've done what a few other competitors have also done, which is look at all the little components, yeah. the valves, little parts, and model each bit and see how it works. It's funny, and isn't it, how the, how the sort of evolution of modeling has gone from, you know, here's, here's an amp sound, and a, and a clever man on his computer types in different algorithms to make it sound like that. Plus that was, seven equals Marshall. Yes, binary. <laughs> Um, and that was like 15 years ago. And in the last year or so, you, you've, you've absolutely got manufacturers going, well, let's actually look at the circuit. Let's look at every single transistor and capacitor and yeah. pot and everything. And, and I reckon they run around, they capture dwarves, and they get one that's really good at bits and making right. stuff, have like from World seen, of Warcraft. Have you seen that film? Uh, what was the film where they inject? They made people really small and injected them into your bloodstream? And oh, I don't know, called? but for a minute I got excited thinking you were talking about Time Bandits. No, no, what was the which film? Which was the Come on. best film ever like, made. Weird, was it Weird Science? No, it wasn't. Yeah, no, that was a good one. When but I was it was that film. I think that's what they've done. Oh, How Do I Shrunk the they, Kids? No, but it, it was that kind of concept, but you got shrunk so little tiny things than that shrunk and put into, into a somebody. spaceship. Into You're your talking about stream. insemination, aren't you? Sort of, <laughs> but that's what they've done. And so, tiny, there's a crew of tiny Vox people basically went into all the uh, best amplifiers in the world and worked it all out. That didn't um, happen. So the VTX range, uh, what Rob was talking about there is what they're calling their VET technology, virtual element tech. Um, so VTX. all the different amps, no VET, VTX is Valvetronics, oh, right. and VET is the virtual element tech. Oh, I think PTX should play VTX, that'd be great. So what we get in this amplifier are 11 amp models, I have a list of them here, I shan't tell you them all now because they're all the ones that you'd expect, but you know, Fenders and Boxes and Marshalls and rather, um, uh, what's, what's the right word? When they got a Vox. When, when sort of optimistically, yes, they've got. Uh, they, they now have a couple of Dumble models in here. So of course, you know, Alexander Dumble selling amps for hundreds of thousands of dollars. You I wonder how many. Of them anymore. I wonder how many people will have a reference point for what a Dumble sounds like. Almost no one is the truth, apart from when you listen to someone like Robin Ford play. But then at the end of the day, he could probably plug into a shoebox and sound amazing. Yeah. Um, so there are three amps in the VTX range: A20, which has an eight-inch speaker and it's going to cost you £149 English money. A 40, which is this one, which has a 10-inch speaker and will cost you £199. And a 100, which is a 12-inch speaker, still at a 112 inch So they've scrapped the 2x12 from the, the Valvetronics range. Uh, 100, uh, which is £289. Uh, they are all the same uh, preamp knobs and buttons and everything. So, That's so really cheap. It's stupid cheap, isn't That's it? That's really now, affordable. There is one thing that you guys should know that is a little different on this amplifier to the previous mode, to previous model. It no longer uses um, 
a normal kettle lead. Do you know what I mean? Well, everyone not yeah, yeah, like yeah, a yeah, mains. It doesn't use a normal <coughs> mains anymore. So it uses a, a specific adapter, like a, a, a 19 volt adapter, believe it or not. What that means is that if you're in England and yes. you want to buy one, you have to buy one from a UK retailer yes. or it'll come with the wrong Yes, power so don't thing. forget, if you live in Europe, make sure you buy it from a European retailer. Uh, no, I, I should, shouldn't say that because in, uh, Britain is in Europe. But if you, you know, if you essentially live in the bit of Europe, if you're outside that isn't of England, the UK, yeah. then obviously uh, buy one from a local retailer. Of course, Ireland would be the, the same, UK, wouldn't it? Uh, do you know what? I don't even know what. Do they use two pin or three pin plugs? I'm sure I. That's crazy. I've never, I've never, been, I, I've, I've never, I've been, never been to Ireland. Road. Wait a minute. Road trip. Road trip. Road, road trip. So well, yeah, all we're saying, does. and if you live in America, so actually buy it from someone that will supply it with the right plug, because it'll be a right old faff if you get this with the, you, you know with the wrong thing. Somebody in Ireland, please come up with a reason why we need to go there, other than the Guinness and the incredible food and the wonderful people. So also in here, we have a ton of effects that we'll go through, you know, compressors, choruses, flangers, reverbs, delays, tons and tons of effects uh, that are all editable. Um, we've got some clever stuff to do with things like bias shift and, and class A and class AB modeling, which is all to do with sort of power amp modeling. We have, which has always been the sort of Valvetronics trademark, we have a real valve in the preamp section, uh -huh. not a fake one, a real one. Um, and you can store stuff and, and funky and, and anyway, and a couple of other things as well. Unlike, I, like, I like the split panel cool kind of vintage look, but I'm not so keen on the plastic handle with the pretend hashings as if it's I am, leather. I am totally into the split panel yeah. and utterly understand <coughs> why. Do you know why? It's grippy. Because I know when I'm dealing with uh, the, like the boutique amp companies that yeah. we deal with, that a really nice hand-stitched leather handle yeah. adds somewhere between 40 and 50 pounds to the eventual retail price. That's a lot of weight. And it's like, yeah. Uh, so you can imagine, clearly on an amplifier, you're trying to sell for 150, 200 pounds. You can't have a no, 40 of course. pound handle. What I meant was it just looks kind of funny to have it plastic and oh, the, the pretend, pretend stitching. Yeah, um, I mean, it's fine to have a plastic handle, but it's kind of funny that it's got pretend stitching. But the look is sick, Yeah, I rough. really like the look. I think this is absolutely going to appeal to Vox fans, you know, and, and that was, if there was a criticism of the, the outgoing range, the VTX range, yeah. uh, I didn't really like the sort of the metal grill and no, Vox, Vox trying to be a bit sort of like, you know, they should be, <laughs> it should be classic and old fashioned -y looking. Uh, so what do we got? We've got new DSP, we've got uh, a USB output so that you can uh, use the tone editor, so it's not a recording interface. It's all about um, creating new amp models, sharing your amp models with, I can't even say that word, models. Sharing your amp models. Where, that's another Indian word, models. You didn't realise that. I was just pronouncing it using the correct uh, To go with bungalow pyjamas and hullabaloo. <laughs> yeah. Models. Um, so you could share your uh, patches with people all around the world. As a wooden cabinet, and also as well, they 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 tried to do this this thing um, where it's like a a super airtight sort of sealed cabinet to yeah. give it that sort of projection and less rattle and all yeah. that kind of stuff. I like that. Important. Um, so look, let's make some sounds. Let's make some sound. That's what make we do in noise. these videos. This control here is the one that does my amp models. So what you're going to see me doing first of all is just going through those amp models. So we're starting off with uh, their model called the Deluxe uh, CL, which um, for those of you thinking, no, oh, that's never complicated, gonna survive I'll, I'll unless we get a Vox. Uh, it's the Fender Deluxe uh, 65 Deluxe. So here we go. Big, clean, sparkly sound. You'll notice that for this initial run through of the amp models, the only effect we are adding is reverb, and we'll come to more effects. So the next one is a is a Tweed 410, which of course, as you all know, is a bassman, so a bit darker and perhaps a smidgen of driven overtones. That's a nice tone. Put it in the middle. 
middle. The next one is an AC30. Now, if Box can't do a good AC simulation, nobody can. Oh God! Don't put them. Don't put the pressure on. Yeah. Onto them, like in that kind of a way. That sounds reasonably yeah, good, doesn't it? Sounds Some tones. I, I I like the reverb. It's not kind of it. It is digital clearly, but it doesn't have that. I'm a digital reverb oh, sound. I think for the last year or so, most amps with digital reverb now you don't even talk about it anymore. Do you? I might just be tortured by ghosts of the past when I was a kid. Yeah. In my dad's studio I playing a, and going. I think that's sounds a so it. bad. It sounds so uh, bad. Next is. Wait a minute. Uh, I've got to drink some Costa drink coffee. Some coffee. So the next is the Dumball um, Overdrive Special. Now I've got to be honest with you. Uh, I've never heard one of these in the flesh. I did. I thought you hear, had. Well, I heard Robin Ford's one at a Robin Ford clinic, but I'm not even entirely sure if his is an overdrive special. I, I've never heard so, a Dumble before in my life. Not in Although, the flesh, obviously, no. my amplifier is based upon one. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> That's amazing. It sounds exactly like Robin Ford. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? Exactly. Sounds it. nice. Yeah. That fat woody kind of tone. So the next one is now an AC30 top boost. So Brian May tastic. My Brian May guitar. Yeah. Something. Go on then. Just the really quickly, if if we do covers or things that sound like they could really be a cover in these videos, unfortunately, they get claimed by companies and then they're not viewable in places like Germany. Germany's huge. Yes. So we are avoiding doing anything so other have, than this merest kind of glimpse why, of something. That's why I've always done in the style of rather than the exact thing. Yeah. And people go, he's not playing it right um, intentionally because. If I do, people in Germany click and they can't view it. It's really annoying for them. That sounds great. Yeah, it sounds good. Singing, then, so it had to be good. Horse, tell us if we should reposition the B cam. Nay! It's <laughs> probably Sorry. the worst, probably gag the worst gag I've ever, ever done. Ever done ever. Yeah. So the next one is, is a it? JCM 800. No, it's called Brit 800, which of course is based on the JCM 800. Here oh, we go. Give me something else. <laughs> Thank you. 
very nice. Very, very, very usable. Yeah. We like that. Uh, now, uh, Orange getting a bit of love. You don't oh, have to really? see Orange Amp sort of in these sort of modelling things, but testament to obviously how popular they're becoming. So here is a rocker verb. Wow, that sounds like a game, rock. Tremendously nice, right, isn't it? I hereby yeah. condone the amp. Okay, now we're moving to the dual rectifier uh, Rectum model. Fryer. Double rec. They I've got call a mate called Ryan that That's would like this. Double rec. What it's not doing that I like is this thing when the bass kind of flat lines out when you go up certain... It stays focused, which is a really cool thing. I enjoy that. favourite driven tone there actually was the orange tone. Oh, I love it, yeah. And yet, weirdly enough, of course, orange would then go, well, why don't you buy one of our little amplifiers? And then it would be, in a, and you'd go, yeah, but then the Vox would go, but we sound like other amps. And then it, and then all of us, you've got all the amps. You've got Someone, fenders trying to sound like boxes. I've just come up with a really good idea for a video for you. Go on, then. Amps that sound like amps next to the amps that they are. <laughs> so we should have... <laughs> why don't we have, <clears throat> for example, an orange pretending to be a Vox next to a Vox pretending to be an orange. Ah. Anyway, so the last three amp models of here are user settings. So the idea is that you would go onto the Vox Tone Room using the USB uh, input on here and design your own or whatever, share your own, download your own. But just straight out the box, the three amps. Straight out of Compton. Are, straight out the box. Uh, the three amps that are in here are uh, a, another a Dumble Overdrive special. So let's hear. Does that, that mean one. the Vox have got a Dumble oh, Overdrive? Said that. Sorry, this was a sorry. This is the clean channel from an Overdrive special. Oh, okay. Overdrive clean jump Dumble. <laughs> That's lovely. That's a great clean yeah. That's great. So now we have the uh, the next one is the 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 revered and hallowed amp that probably you know invented rock, uh, which is the Marshall 959 super lead plexi thingy. Here we go.
one more, uh, and the last one is an angle. We think oh, it's really? actually a power. <laughs> Germany rushing through my veins it then. It certainly did, and it sounded like it too. Um, okay, so there's your basic palette of tones. You can, of course, you know, you've got treble, middle, bass, gain, volume adjustment on all of these, and you can go into the tone room and tweak them a bit more. Best if you want. for me, Dumble Clean, Powerball, Marshall, and the Orange. Yeah. Were very nice. They all sounded good, didn't they? So now I'm just going to go back to just the, the, deluxe, the 65 Deluxe tone, just peeling simply because it's the cleanest one and it'll be the easiest one for me to demo. Do you want to play? Effects, yeah, sure. So here we go, now we're in the effects section. It's ever so, ever so easy to, to use. The effects are split into three banks, pedal one, pedal two, and reverb, as you can see here. In order to switch a bank on, you just press the button once, switch it off, you hold it down and it switches off. And then to move it to the desired effect that you would want in that bank, you just keep pressing it. And you can see that uh, LED change. Well, that's nice and, nice and nice uh, and And then these buttons over here, value one and value two, you can use to edit whichever uh, one is flashing. So if I if I turn on pedal two, for example, and pedal three, why not? And I want to edit the pedal two, and I want to make that a phaser. I go here like that, and I just tweak these buttons to edit wow. phaser. It's very very simple. I put them on a hall, a hall verb. <laughs> Overdrive to so it we've now. got an actual overdrive. Yeah, there's an overdrive effect you can add I into. wearing the right t-shirt for that sound yes you know what exactly. what else have we got that's, that's, oh, that's good. A good run I went through, through pretty it? much it's everything pretty much there is the different ones. but there's a lot I mean there's compression chorus overdrive distortion flanger phaser tremolo delay spring hall plate room so I think therein lies our, our little run I oh, know I just said one other thing and I, I don't know if they're going to be desperately obvious what they do but if we get a slightly driven tone what if we like drive wise <laughs> So this that is the, the Dumble Drive thing. <clears throat> These buttons over here, bias, shift, and class. I'll put you a bit of verb on first. Hold on, mate. It's got, should have verb on. A bit of room, all right. 
buyer shift. Well, so what the buyer shift does, if it's off, it's yeah. neutral. Yeah, yeah. Cold should make it cleaner. So it's all cold, cold bias, right? <laughs> Now here's red. It's, it's, it's more of a, a saggy kind of feel thing. I'm, so, um, I'm going to turn the reverb off. So go green again. Okay, so play, is... play some chords. And now, now hot. It, it does feel like it wants to be a bit more overdriven, but it's also... It, it, the, the green just seemed to be a bit more sort of saggy and flabby, whereas the red was a bit tighter. I think it's one of those things where the player can feel the difference, but the listener yeah. really can't. Listen. Yeah, yeah. And what about the AB, class AB thing? Okay, so I'll leave it back on green. So here is class A. Class YMCA, do you think? Could we, could yes. Um, so there we are. I like it. I like it too. I think it's a very affordable answer to the questions of many problems. Yeah. Do you know what my favourite thing about it is? Oh. I think the stylistically, because I, you know, <coughs> Box will obviously claim that their DSP is the best, and so will Line Six, and so will Fender, yes. and so will everybody else that makes them. What's the best dumbbell I've ever heard? Um, quite possibly, uh, but stylistically. Uh, it is different. Pretty. I've always liked, like you know, Fender Mustang because that kind of looks oldy woldy, and now I like this too because it looks kind of oldy woldy. But if you don't like oldy woldy, then maybe there's another brand out there that you might like. But um, I don't know. Like Line Six typically don't do oldy woldy; they'll do more contemporary looking. Yes. But you know, it's a great little Fox, amplifier. Fox keeping it old. It's a great little amplifier. Very very reasonable price. Well done, Valvetronics. All the features you'd want. None that you wouldn't really. Stick it next to your PlayStation, rip around when you get inspired. Rip it up. And I bet yes. you that the, the, in terms of volume, uh, let's end on this. Uh, oh, it's loud. It's loud. So we, yeah. haven't, we haven't actually heard the 20 or the 100. This is the 40. But my, my gut feeling is, is, is the 20 is for the guy that's only ever going to be at home. The 40 is for the guy that's going, going to do a bit at home, but I've got some buddies. We're going to team up in the garage, <clears> maybe <throat> do something with a drummer, stuff like that. And the hundred is is for the guy that's going. You know, what, I'm in like a, a school band or something like that, or a small band, and I and I just want to be out there, kind of with enough power to do something. Back to the future style. Yes. Uh, so there we are. Look, congratulations, Vox. I'm sure this will be another winner for you. And we've had a great time. Yes. I've been the captain. I've been Rob. Wow. <laughs> It's quite, um, it's a nice one actually. Mm. Mm. Isn't it funny how some French words are the same as English words and some are different? Like pan, obviously completely different to bread, but chocolat, it's just the same. Yeah, well, that's because we got our language from essentially four different places. We get it from the original Celtics, the Jutes, the Anglos, Angles, and the Vikings. Well, so the Romans coming through. Oh, the Romans as well, but we actually had a lot of Latin words. We've got more, they? more French and Indian in English than we have Latin. We've got Indian in there. Mm. Got a lot of Indian. Korma. Oh, like pajamas. Like pajamas. Bungalow. They're very modern. I can't imagine. It's quite a modern word. How did pajamas come from India? Pajamas is an Indian word. Really? What for? I believe it's Hindi. Mm. What for? Mm. For pajamas. <laughs> yeah, like hullabaloo. That's an Indian word. That sounds Indian. Oh, so there's think about bungalow. Does that sound like an English word? Say it. <laughs> Why would no one have thought of making a single story building though? I mean we must have had a name for it. That's because back in the days of the Raj, mm. when we owned the world, we just Borrowed a load of words and then bought them back and bungalow pajamas, hullabaloo. I find language interesting. <laughs>